Aloha and welcome back to the Cyber Underground where our mission is to dig deep to find out how cybersecurity touches our lives and everyday life. I'm your host Dave Stevens and here with me today again is my exceptional guest and co-host uh, Just In Case. <laughs> or fill in. <laughs> or fill in. <laughs> Gordo the Tech Star, everybody. Starting from Hibachi Talk. Caught your show last week. It was yeah. great. Document management stuff? No, that was uh, week that was before. The week before so. This week was on how much energy the tech industry consumes. 500 million barrels of oil a day. Oil a day. That's worldwide. Yeah. Wow. And no, worldwide. in the U.S. Just in the, just in the U.S. US. 500 million barrels of oil a day in the tech industry. Uh, does that count my house? I, I no, it just counts this time. stuff. Wow. And the, and the server farms and Google and Amazon Web Services and all, and wireless and wireline and all of that stuff. But you think, yeah. and your refrigerator, not your refrigerator itself, but the technology in your refrigerator. Sure. The Internet of Things. So that was the show this I week. I would imagine recharging batteries is a huge. There you go, recharging batteries. We've become batteries. a rechargeable society yeah. now. We're, we're dependent on batteries. Do you know it costs more money to make this than it does to make a refrigerator? Get out of here. Energy wise. No kidding. Yes. Really? So I, think I, of that. And you think know the of the carbon side. footprint too. <laughs> yeah, I know it's crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, nuts. we digress. This is your show, not this is, my this show. This is my show. <laughs> uh, we're going to attack Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and we're going to go into uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, but however, we've had an event today that's yeah. worldwide. Yeah. Covered 74 countries so far. Yeah. Over 45,000 plus computers have been hit with a ransomware attack. Yeah. Uh, most. So what's UK. ransomware? Uh, uh, ransomware. Tell, explain for our, our audience what ransomware is. <laughs> no, I'm the guest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they turn the tables on you. Yeah. Uh, ransomware is usually delivered via email with an encrypted package, and it looks like a regular old link, uh, like an attachment. Mm -hmm. You click on it, think you're going to get an I, I love you letter or whatever right. you're going to get, or your spreadsheet. And uh, it, it sets about encrypting everything on your hard drive, and it goes and looks for any mapped hard drives to the network. Right. Transfers itself to that computer and starts encrypting that computer. Right. And just keeps jumping from place to place until your entire network is encrypted. Then you get a message on your screen saying, hey, if you want this decrypted, you got to give us some Bitcoin. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, well, you, you got to give us ransomware. And, Bit, yes. and you know, or Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is one of them. And, um, and the, the thing about having today is like 74 countries, right? Yeah. Um, the U.S. was the least hit, which I thought was interesting. Russia was one of the largest hit. Yeah, their their uh, megaphone, which uh, M E G A F O N, their telephone company, is their biggest cell carrier over yeah. there. Got hit. Um, one of our FedEx carriers got hit at a remote location, but mostly the U K, Russia, and uh, Italy. It literally shut down the U K health system today. People, they 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 um, stopped surgeries because they couldn't bring up the patient record because it was being held in this ransomware um, attack that went on. That's probably very wise. I wouldn't want someone to operate on me <laughs> without my patient record, knowing that, you know, is this the leg we cut off? Or it could be Something. my record that they could be assuming, and then you're really in a <laughs> lot really of trouble. But so this, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a crazy thing. So, you know, we, this is, this is I, I don't want to sound like Armageddon or whatever, <laughs> but this is like World War III. This, this is the be new the first step. Yeah. World War III, right. right? It's cyber is the new World War that, III. That is the vanguard of the assault in right. any World War scenario yeah. from here going forward. Yeah. Until and someone pulls the plug. So the question right. is, who did this? That's a good question, but uh, it looks like the tool that accomplished this was an NSA tool called WannaCry, right. which was released uh, via nefarious means uh, right. months and months ago, in fact, late last year. But uh, it looks like... Microsoft realized that there was a vulnerability in their software, in their operating system, and released a patch in March and told everybody, hey, run this patch. Right. Those who did not are susceptible to this ransomware attack. And just goes to show you, you need to pay attention to those the things. Patch Tuesday, you have to do Patch Tuesday. And, that's, you know, and one of the things, that I read it today, so I'm just telling you what I read. <laughs> um, the, the health system within the uh, Great Britain, yeah. the majority of the computers that are running on their desktops are running XP. It's Windows XP. What? Windows XP oh, has not been supported for like, I can't remember how long. There are no patches. They're not gonna come out with a patch. But guess what, because when you start doing budget constraints, one of the first That's that right. gets hit is the IT department. And right now, the most vulnerable is your IT department. 
Which, this is ironic because you're right. When it comes to uh, getting your return on investment, you spend millions of dollars on your computers. You're thinking, I want to get five years out of that. Yeah. Right? But no one considers, whoa, 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 if you don't keep that up, this is your biggest vulnerability, yeah. therefore your biggest cost loss if you get hit. And, and they're, they're delaying these patches. And what I've seen in, in most companies, and I've worked for companies like this too, and I won't mention them. Yeah. Um, well, the, me too. The budgets are, are made around how much effort and time will it take to do these implementations, and will it break something? Yeah. Now, you, you remember uh, Windows 7 days, uh, you yeah. did Microsoft patches, and and sometimes it would break software that you were running because they would change libraries in the .NET framework and so forth. Right. And so people were afraid and they wanted to test that patch before they pushed it out to the network. And people are still in that mode and it's too slow. Yep. They're not testing those patches. And really when I tell people to, to upgrade and do these patches and they tell me that fear, my response is, look, would you rather break one application or be responsible for the complete shutdown of your business. Yeah. Your loss of business continuity, no income, I, versus one application not working right. Not working, and this is a perfect example. Yeah. The entire, essentially the entire healthcare system of Great Britain Grand got Joel. shut down to a halt. And that includes the healthcare system, the, the physicians, you know, the clinicians, the uh, service providers like the radiologists, numerous ones all shut down because of this one attack that we don't know who it's from yet, and um, I hear I hear mafia. I hear all kinds of things going on. Every kid in his basement. It could be some kid in his basement. Come on. They it want the easiest pie. So here is you know, pay the ransom at three hundred dollars. If you don't pay it, three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. We'll give you the key. If you don't pay it in one hour, it jumps to four hundred. If you don't pay it <laughs> in the next hour, it jumps to five hundred. So this is not like we're not talking like. This is not four hundred million. This is four hundred dollars. That sounds like a bookie. And probably in <laughs> cryptocurrency. You know, pay it now, or you're going to pay the big. Pay it now, <laughs> um, which can be traced. Everybody thinks cryptocurrency can't be traced, but Everything they can. Everything can be traced. On so yeah. um, it's it's. I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing unfolds over the over the next few days. It's, I'm it's hoping a, they re can, can recover in time to actually not hurt people. Yeah. I mean, if there's people that actually die because of this. That could be some Well, there was a guy that was scheduled, I read it today in the paper, scheduled for heart surgery today in Britain, and he, they, they um, postponed it. Oh, that's tragic. I, I can't believe this is Chemotherapy happening. patients had their chemotherapy um, sessions canceled. We should, we should restate, by the way, for our audience out there, yeah. uh, this is usually via email. Yes. Which means this is usually one careless employee. Yes. That has double clicked on perfect. something. And, and I always go back to this perfect example when I was a programmer at this company uh, uh, in the Los Angeles area in uh, 2000. We had the I love you virus. And it was, it was a perfect was hit the, for the programming yeah, department. The tennis because star. We, we all saw I love you on the subject line. And every programmer, all us geeks went, oh, really? Double click, double yeah, click. Yeah. And of course, you know, blanketed <laughs> emails you across. And next Somebody loves know. me. <laughs> and, and it's so easy to fool people and then clicking on things now. And so one person who's undertrained yep. or careless or a little apathetic one day or a little tired and your whole network goes down. Yep. And this one patch could have prevented it. Could have prevented it. And I tell everybody, if, you, if in doubt about an email, delete it. If It'll it's that back. important, someone will call you. If it's that real, <laughs> someone will call you. I mean, delete it. It's not if it's you know, it, even if it's if in doubt, knock it out. I mean, that's all I say. Just if in doubt, <laughs> knock it out, and don't even listen or don't even um, watch, read it. Don't even open it. Nothing. You sound like my old football coach. <laughs> I've, I've been knocked out a few times. <laughs> that could have some implications in the medical industry if you get knocked out too many times. I'm, I'm curious as to why it's not just uh, the United States. From what I see, the, the entire Western Hemisphere was very lightly affected. Yeah. From Canada all the way down. And I think it's because there's a, a, a huge awareness of it here in this country, mm. whether it be because of what's happened with elections or what we do is promoting this in shows like yourselves or right. shows like Ibachi Talk, where we're always telling people, be aware, be aware, be aware. Um, so I think that that's made it more forefront, and you see it in the news and things. So that's put us on, on the edge. So that's a good thing. That is a good thing. You know, uh, last week, uh, no, week before last, we had a show where we talked about cybersecurity uh, cert certifications. Yes. And why it's important to have those certs and those people that have certs on, on staff. When I looked at the distribution of how many of these, say, CISSP certifications there were per country, the United States and Great Britain had the vast majority of them. 
um, this is over 70,000 here in the U.S., uh, 20 or so thousand. And that's a, that's a, say what that, explain what a CISSB is. Certified Information System Security Professional. Yeah, so, so that's a, a great career opportunity. Gold standard. Yes. Right? You get that certification now. Those people on staff will know you need to cover your bases. You need to do Patch Tuesdays. You need to train your staff. Right. You need to not click on that. And it's funny that the country that has the most certifications of that kind is the least impacted yes. by this attack. And that so that kind of explains. You know, there could be a causality. There could there. be looking there could for a be. connection. Oh, I never used that word causality. <laughs> Ooh. That sounds like someone who went to university That's, used that yeah, word. Well, maybe <laughs> or yeah, teachers maybe, at university. Maybe, maybe a causality. Of years, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, we're, not, we're we, not allowed to say impossible anymore. Oh okay. We have to say computationally improbable. Oh Jesus! <laughs> That's freaking impossible. It's impossible for me. It's impossible for me to say that. <laughs> At least after we've had our water. Yeah, it's yeah, true. It's okay. So anyway, so um, so this so again, I guess to the viewers, and, and I hope they put it up as a PSA. As it, you got to watch for these emails because they're going to keep coming because it's still propagating itself. It That's didn't right. end That's just right. because seventy-four countries were notified doesn't mean it stopped. I, the, the funny thing is, uh, I heard that in Great Britain they had a, a general announcement to everybody to turn off your computers. Yeah. They sent it via email. <laughs> if in doubt, <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> so guess what I would do as a um, um, someone who's maybe uh, no, I ain't gonna tell you what I'll do. But, but, but you can just you think about it, right? I'll send out a similar email that might have something in it. Next thing I know, I got the FBI knocking on my door. Most of the people uh, knew better. They shut down their wireless and pulled the plug out of the wall. Yeah. So you know, no power, no network, no virus. You know, interesting thing today is I never turned on my PC today. You just left it off. I just I just said, you know what? I think I'll just take today and not turn it on. How are you doing with that? That's been a struggle. I got, struggle. I got my new iWatch, so I got to go in here and I got this and my phone. You got 65 hours left. <laughs> but I just decided, I said, you know what? And I've got, I, you know, I patch this thing every, I, the first thing I do before I get on the internet is run scans yeah. on all my systems and everything. And then I connect to the internet. Um, but I just said, you know, today, I'm going to just let this thing sit. Just let know, it sit. You bring up a great point and one of the, uh, a great defensive uh, tactic to take. Um, just as a home user, yeah. so our audience should know this, is to run those scans, even though it's an inconvenient thing to do, run them at the middle, in the middle of the night when you're, not, y yep. when you're not on the computer. And what it does is it sets a baseline for your computer. So if something funky does start going on, all the bells and whistles go on, right. hey, something is not normal, is this supposed to be happening? And you get some warning messages about that. So, the, you know, so I'll give you one of my, 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 my standard scenario in the morning. is I get up in the morning and I don't automatically connect to the internet. So I, in the morning, and I run the scan, then I go get my coffee and let it run. Run, do what you ever gotta do. So, well, it's inconvenient, get up early. Get up early, right? Get up 15 <laughs> minutes early. Then I run the scans, I come back, look what's going on. Then I connect to the internet, and then I move on with what I'm going to do. That's a great idea. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 uh, sure, it's inconvenient, but you know what? I'm sitting there breathing comfortably that I think I've got everything to take. lose your system and have to yeah, recover, Yeah, we spend right? the days and hours yeah. and the money. That's right. And I've been called in to... Um, called in to uh, organizations to help them get out from under. Oh, and one last thing I'd ask, uh, not ask for state. Um, <laughs> the NSA, if you go to their website, they have a, a, a whole listing of all the keys to undo these um, uh, encrypted documents. So if you go look at NSA, look for their um, um, uh, website for the keys, you might be fortunate enough to find the key that will unlock your data because and not have to yeah. pay the ransomware. Because they reuse keys sometimes. Yes. When they're doing the ransomware attack on multiple companies, they'll reuse the decrypt key Correct. to get out of the ransomware attack, and those keys might be published already. So yes. go check that first. And we did that on one of our earlier Hibachi, Hibachi talk shows. We talked about that and gave everybody a heads up to go ahead and do that. That's why they should be watching you. <laughs> they should be watching Hibachi, Hibachi talk because we give right. you a heads up. <laughs> Hibachi talk, by the way, everybody, is on uh, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. At 2 p.m. now. That's right. And then you guys go on YouTube by the next day. Um, you're usually, well, YouTube, talk. usually within 24 hours or 48 hours. Within 24 hours. hours. Mm -hmm. So you get your whole channel. Just go to YouTube. Just look up Hibachi talk. All the episodes. Or Cyber are. Underground. Or Cyber Underground. See how I got that right this you time? You got that right. It's not Cyber Underwear. Or, or Underwear or Underworld or whatever. 
I made it just for the audience. One day I made a slight faux pas <laughs> and called it cyber underwear. Okay, we're going to take a little break. Uh, we'll be right back with you guys. Uh, stay safe, and uh, we'll be right back to talk about cryptocurrency. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. This is uh, my guest and co-host today, Cy uh, Cyber Tech Czar. <laughs> Fill in. Fill in. <laughs> Justin Case. Justin Case or just in time. <laughs> so the whole first part of our show, uh, we neglected to talk about our topic because we were talking about something current and relevant and an emergency situation right. to tell people informationally, stay away from this uh, horrible ransomware attack. Don't click on that email. If in right. doubt, knock it out. If in doubt, so knock it out. That's a good out. tip. So cryptocurrency. That's so, why you were I here. Mean, I mean, you're asking, <laughs> and we got like 14 minutes to do this. So I'll, I'll preface this by saying, if you go and look at Hibachi talk, about a month or so ago, I did a, um, um, a show that said, um, Understanding cryptocurrency in 28 minutes, 101, where I did an example of what it is. Now I'm going to do it quickly with you right now. Okay. So assume you and I are playing poker. Okay. Okay. But we don't have money. That's usually the case with me. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. So now we're in perfect. So 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 we're playing poker, and there's four of us at the table, and we deal the cards. And every hand that comes up, we have to write down what happens. You you're you're going to bet a dollar that you don't have. Right? So you say, I'm betting a dollar. I'm going to write down Dave bet a dollar. So I'm kind of running a tab. You're running a tab. Yeah, okay. So And Susie's going to go, Dave wrote a dollar. Oh, so and we're Johnny's going to write down okay. a dollar. So, and as you go, oh, wait, Susie bet a dollar. Okay, we're right. So we're all keeping track of those dollar bets. Oh, I'll raise you a dollar. Okay, write it down. And so at the end of that hand, after we've done all of this, you win. You win because of the cards that get dealt out. You win. Now we go back and we look at our ledger to see if, like, and John says, well, you know, I, I never bet that dollar. And you go, oh, wait, wait, no, I got here. I saw that you bet the dollar. You can say, no, I show you bet the dollar. Susie says, John, you bet the dollar. You did be, bet the dollar. So don't try to not get away uh, with this. So we've now just confirmed in this confirmation, I'll call it a hash. This confirmation of this, all this stuff happened gets verified and boom, we're done. So think of cryptocurrency as that on a global scale. A shared ledger. A shared ledger okay. that goes, oh, thank you. That, a, shared, <laughs> a shared ledger that's around the world as we move this new form of currency, not the U.S. dollar, not the, the uh, I don't know what, the yen or the ruple or whatever. It's a new form of currency that has value based on supply and demand. Another comment. The U.S. dollar is based on what? Uh, it's not the gold standard anymore. A, I almost said gold, and it's not silver anymore. It's not it's, gold or silver. It's based on what the world thinks it's worth. It's a market value. It's a market value. Right. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is one of them, is based on what the world thinks it's worth. Worth. worth, worth. So um, I got new teeth. Um, so um, so you know. So that's that's and, and Bitcoin is a, one of those forms. Mm. You know, Bitcoin is a. A type of currency because there's um, Ethereum, there's Litecoin, there's a new one now which I'm really fo following called Potcoin. Pot now that sounds fun. Yeah, sounds fun. Okay. And the reason Potcoin is being created is because the um, marijuana, medical marijuana distributors, or the recreational ones are not allowed to put their cash in the banks, in the federal That's banks, right. because it's still against the law 
Federally. Federally. That's right. So they're moving hundreds of millions of dollars around this country. In cash. In cash. <laughs> because when you go into them, and I know because I have in Colorado, and went in there, because I was doing some investigative reporting. Of course. <laughs> and went in there, and sure, it's cash only industry. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, because they can't put the money in the bank they and, can't, they and can't. support how they got the money. And how they got the money. Yeah. So they've got to move it into some other form of currency. Pot coin. I love it. So so the, this pot coin is now starting up, and it's very much in its infancy is you know this stuff is all high risk too so um, it's starting up now as a a way that the um, the marijuana industry and this includes the growers the doctors that write the prescriptions uh, you, you gotta admit this is no more risky than the stock market or the US dollar or currency exchange in general this is, this is the same thing. Well, der derivatives. Well, you know, what <laughs> we let the banks do derivatives, and look what happened to the economy right, when that happened. 2008, we went down the We tar went down the, <laughs> down the tubers, and so everybody said, well, it's so risky. Okay, but you trusted the banks. That's right, and the banks got to do, because they were deregulated. Yeah. They got to do whatever they, they got wanted. They got to do it. So, and and uh, the beauty of, of, of cryptocurrency, and, uh, and please don't go buy cryptocurrency, because I said it, it's your decision. Um, Gordon said, go get cryptocurrency. <laughs> no, I did not. This is, this is a command. You must go buy some. No, actually, you shouldn't because it's really expensive. If now. you, it's not, <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. If someone wants to go and in, in, invest and in, in, in purchase cryptocurrencies, this is not for the faint of heart. But the beauty of it now, as a, as a, as opposed to when I first got into it, is I can turn this into cash. I can turn this into U.S. cash. Canadian How cash. How do you turn uh, there's, bro there's brokers out there. Just so like there's, a stock broker. It's just like a stock broker. Okay. There's brokers out there. There's um, distributors out there. And I'll give you one that really peed me off. It's like um, one of the best in the U.S. is, in my opinion, is an organization called Coinbase. They've got a lot of venture capital. They've really set up a great system and so on. And I was using Coinbase as my method to... But the state of Hawaii shut that down here. Department yeah. of Commerce and Consumer Affairs said to Coinbase, if you um, want to do business in Hawaii, you have to keep the equivalent of what the value of Bitcoin is worth in U.S. currency in a local, in a local bank. Now, ba local banks have to keep like 8% of what the currencies are going they around. they want 100%. They want 100%. So I got a nice email. <laughs> Careful what you'll read. Nice email. <laughs> I got a nice email from... Um, uh, uh, from them and said you need to, um, you got 30 days to close out your account. So what, are, what do you think I did? I went offshore. Come on. These, I went offshore and I did two things. I went offshore and then I bought a device called a Keep Key. It's about this size. This, size, this little size top up it here. It keeps the, the crypto and keys I, to your currency. Keep, yeah, yeah. And so all my currency is sitting on there. So now it's DCCA going to say I can't buy this on Amazon? <laughs> I bought it on Amazon, it came in, I moved all my Bitcoin to this, and now I, and every time I want to move Bitcoin around, I just plug it in, and I go through the oh, other, other places. On, on the air. I don't so care what, they're going to come, yeah. the FBI is going to come in and knock down on my door, I doubt it. This is a new administration. But, you know, DCCA just, <laughs> this is, you guys are oh, beyond fathoming. And I can, all I can tell you is that um, I was, a number of my friends that were in it, I, um, um, they, they got out and they, they're not in it like I am. And they made, um, for every $100 they put in Bitcoin in one year, they got $160 back. That's not a bad return. That's better not than any a stock bad I return. Can name right but it's now. not. Again, I'm not telling you to do this because it's not for the faint of heart. You heard him. Gordo said, "Go on, <laughs> no, buy no. cryptocurrency." I'll tell you right now why. <laughs> for right now, this is how. So, just so you know, within the last um, day, Bitcoin has gone down 153 bucks. So it's, it's not the for last the faint day. Of, well, wasn't yeah. it at 1,200 dollars? It's 1,665 oh. right now. Within the past hour, it's gone up 53 bucks. So this is a roller coaster ride. That's just Bitcoin. Ethereum, I'll tell you right now, it's gone up two dollars and five cents in the past hour. In the past day, it's gone down four bucks. So it's just a roller coaster ride. Um, and then there's Litecoin and whatever. So I track all of these things, but it's it's like the stock market on steroids. Yeah. And it goes, it just goes and goes and goes and goes. Do you believe that in the future this is our currency? I believe that this will be a uh, currency of uh, 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 international trade. India now recognizes it as a um, form of currency within their country because it's more stable than their currency. It's based on oh, supply and demand. So if I wanted to get a cab, I could use Bitcoin? Yes, you can. Really? I could buy a Starbucks with a Bitcoin on my iPhone. Right now? Right now, today. Really? I mean, I can go to Best Buy, on, online on Best Buy and use Bitcoin to buy a PC. 
Oh, that's great. So I can go to Wal Walmart online takes Bitcoin. So I, I, I did also noticed in our research on the dark web that everyone takes Bitcoin. Which, which is a little weird to me because, you know, you and I have been in the computer industry for quite a while, and we know that there is nothing that can't be traced. Exactly. Right? So if I'm selling illegal weapons on the stock market, or I mean on the, the dark web, uh, you come to me, you give me your Bitcoin, I send you a weapon. Now your address is traceable, I have your personal information, plus your crypto key. And that's what happened, that's what cleaned up the industry. It's like, I go, you know, I'll use derivatives again, the banking industry and derivatives. What cleaned up the industry was the fact that people were doing illegal things with it, and people said, we've got to start tracking this. And every transaction is traceable. Is it easy to trace it? No, but it is, with good computer systems, easy to trace it. And you ain't gonna do it with your laptop. And there's no way to hide it, really, because of the shared ledger. Exactly. We've, we've got, we, remember, we talked about it earlier. Yeah. You got a ledger, you got a ledger, you got a ledger, it's all, all the shared the ledger, all over the world. Millions of them. The biggest Bitcoin miner in the world right now is China. They got supercomputers processing and verifying every transaction. And you ask yourself, why is China verifying every Bitcoin transaction around the world? Probably because they're Taken Bitcoin correct? because you every time you verify a transaction you get Bitcoin. Oh, I got to start doing that. Is that mining? Is that what they that's call mining? That's called mining. Okay. So, and you know, and so mining Bitcoin is a way to make more Bitcoin. And I'm you know when I first got into this I could do it with my my PC at home, but not now. Supercomputers are because they got to verify the transaction and they verify it within. It used to be like within an hour. Mm. Now it's within seconds. Soon it's going to be within milliseconds. Oh, so, so for me to be a miner of these bitcoins and to verify transactions, I have to verify a transaction within a few seconds. Within, yeah, whereas before you had time. So way beyond my personal yeah. computing power. Yeah, way That's beyond. That's too bad, because I could have written an app for the phone and, you know, just mine bitcoins. Well, there was guys and girls that got together and said, let's combine all of our computers that we can process. And they found out that the graphic car graphics cards on their computers had more processing power, so they were using that oh, as the, the way. the GPUs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Using the GPUs to help process the and authenticating the transactions. I haven't authentic authenticated a transaction in a year, and it runs all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Nothing. still trying. <laughs> still trying. Hey, at a thousand dollars a change, well, uh, sixteen hundred dollars. If I want some bitcoins, how do I go get some? Well, now you can't go to Coinbase. You have to go offshore, and there's 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 out there, and I'm not going to name the names of them, but there's there's uh, there's Bitcoin exchanges mm -hmm. out there, and you can go there and set up an account, and you can move money from your credit card or from your bank um, to those those organizations, and from there, then you can decide. Um, just like you're buying stock, you can buy a, a particular cryptocurrency, whether it be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. Um, I haven't seen Potcoin up on those yet, but but there's a number of I'll those different, a number of those up there. I know, so it's really inexpensive. Uh, no, I wouldn't mind dumping a hundred bucks on it. Is there a is there a fee when you make this? Oh yeah, there's all have transaction fees. Yeah. But they're so the the thing is that the transaction fees within the cryptocurrencies are very low, lower than credit card. And you can go down eight decimal places in a huge in a yeah. Bitcoin, right? Yeah. You don't have to spend one. And let's start this up. What would you tell people about Bitcoin? Good, bad, or ugly? Should they get into it? Should they have some? Oh, I'm not going to tell you to get it. My first advice is don't, I'm not telling you to get into it. You heard him. He said, get into Bitcoin <laughs> no, right now. Not, <clears throat> no, no, no. This is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> I know. I would, I, what I tell people is say, you know, do your homework. Like you would do anything. If you're going to buy any stock, whether it be Amazon, Google, um, Apple, whatever, um, go do your homework. And you can go to uh, YouTube, you can go to wherever, and, and, and start looking and doing your homework and figuring out how to, you need to understand this. Before you buy it. Before you buy it. You've got to go in there tip. and understand it. I mean, Bill Gates created um, um, his own version of a cryptocurrency for nonprofits, purely so he could fund third world countries where they can do a $25 transaction for next to nothing. They can't do a $25 credit card transaction in a third world country because the cost of that credit card transaction it's is more, more than they make in a week. So we're going to have to wrap this up. Okay, sorry. Uh, just so you know, everybody, uh, Gordo is saying go out there and buy a cryptocurrency right now. Uh, I'd like to. I'm not coming on this show anymore. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Stay safe.